Hello and welcome to Everything to Guppy, the Binding of Isaac podcast that covers mostly just the trinkets in the Binding of Isaac series of video games. It's not a well thought out podcast. Uh, my name is Gary Butterfield and with me is the man from the Bible Trachtenberg family slideshow players, Will Hughes. Wow, Gary, that's a reference I'm not getting at all. It's a, it's from an unpopular band. Oh, okay. See, I, I always assume if I don't get the reference, it's music. The, uh, the, this concept for a band, I think it was very clever. Mm -hmm. Uh, it was a guy and his family and he, uh, he played uh, instruments. His wife played instruments. His daughter played drums and she was a little like young girl. So it was fun to watch because she was good at it, but she's little. And then, uh, he would go to all the state sales and get a uh, set of slides okay. and then write songs about them and then show the slides. That is so it would be like, you know, here's a va family vacation from the seventies or whatever. He'd write a song about that vacation and show the slideshow. Yeah. You said Trachtenberg and all I thought was Michelle Trachtenberg from Pete and Pete and mm -hmm. later Buffy the Vampire Slayer. This guy's last name is also Trachtenberg. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's, yeah. Names. Dan Trachtenberg, director of the parrot of the, uh, 10 Cloverfield Lane. Interesting. A movie uh, I liked. Yeah. One of, now, I guess two Cloverfield movies that were not conceived as Cloverfield movies. J.J. Abrams mm -hmm. just wants to ratchet them all together. He's trying to add everything to our uh, creepy pasta extended universe. That everything we're... to Guppy. To Guppy, bringing Wait. it back. What day is it, Will? Gary, it's Trinket Sunday. Sunday, Monday. Trinket. Days, Tuesday, Wednesday. Trinket. Days, Thursday, Friday. Trinket. Days. <laughs> Yeah, here's um, a here's a creepy thing I thought to say way back at the start of the episode. Okay, just the trinket. <laughs> it's like a terrible shirt. Yeah, <laughs> for the for <laughs> the show. Yeah, for the uh, show. Okay, <laughs> but just like you know, like one of like you can get like different shirts. Like one says just the trinket, and the other <laughs> one is like who's the boss Sunday or something like that. <laughs> just like, I want to say like, I am, I am committed to there never being merch for this show. But ah. you are all authorized by me, not by Duckfeed, uh, mm -hmm. to create bootlegs. Yeah, go to Vistaprint, yeah. where they're cheap and bad quality. So, the, uh, <laughs> so go ahead, and if you have a review for the show, uh, why don't you go to Vistaprint and put and it print on a t-shirt? That's yeah. such a good idea. The first person <laughs> who comes up to me at a convention with a review for this show on a Vistaprint t-shirt, printed, like, not, I will not, buy you a drink. Yeah, you can't so. just, you cannot just like Sharpie it on there. No, you no, have no, to have to this printed. thing printed. It's very funny. Can I, can I tell you a quick story about custom t-shirts? Please do, Gary. Uh, in about a week, uh, I'm celebrating my birthday. Yes. Happy and soon to be your birthday, although it will be the past when this episode airs. Mm -hmm. By the time this airs, I will be 38 or dead. One of those two things. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, I'm having a tiny puppets themed birthday party. I plan to attend. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, I had a t-shirt made up, uh, a tiny puppets shirt. Mm-hmm. And I had to go through Vista Print, and it's a terrible shirt. I originally was going through another custom shirt thing, and the lady emailed me and wanted me get to get the rights to the Muppet Babies <laughs> to make that shirt. <laughs> and I and I, I I sent her back. I'm thinking, oh, these are not the Muppet. Like, and I was trying to play along in the universe because I thought it was funnier. Yeah. And I was like, that's a common misconception, but they are not the Junior Minis. These are actually the Tiny Puppets. They're not ripoffs. <laughs> Did she enjoy that? Uh, that. Uh, she ignored yeah. that line of conversation. I sent her the video with him explaining that they're not ripoffs. And then, uh, so that didn't work. I sent her another email. I'm like, listen, this is a parody thing. It's protected by that. Here's the tweet where I got permission from the creator yeah. to do this. Like, surely this is enough. And she's like, unfortunately, you're going to need to get the Muppet Babies rights from the Henson Company <laughs> to make a one-off shirt for this thing. And I was just like... This seems unreasonable. <laughs> I will take my business elsewhere. <laughs> like, and you know it's unreasonable. Like, I was pretty mad about it, actually. Yeah. Uh, so I got a way worse shirt. I am sorry. Uh, Gary, what item okay. are we talking about today? Oh, the Bible tract. Yeah. Yep. Pretty boring. Uh, yeah. Uh, much like our last trinket, the Black Lipstick, uh, mm -hmm. this item creates, causes a certain kind of heart to spawn more. In this case... Eternal mm -hmm. Hearts, uh, mm -hmm. which what, are maybe what? my, I don't know, third least favorite type of heart. They're in a certain kind of run, they're good. In a lot of kind of runs, they're just not very... Like, it, it's cool, like, getting one, like, I love it when one drops at the end of a boss. Yeah. And it's like, oh, here's a, just a free health up. You know? Uh, if it, if they didn't round up at the end of floors, they'd be bad. Yeah, well, what I hate about them... So, so to be clear, Eternal Hearts are... They appear as white half-hearts. 
Uh, mm. If you get one, all it does is absorb a hit. Uh, if you get two, it turns into a new heart container. Yes. I tend to have runs, and I guess this is me bragging. Uh, if I get, if I have like Bible tract, say, mm-hmm. I get so many eternal hearts that I tend to have too many heart containers and it blocks out my spirit hearts and it actually lowers my survivability quite a bit. Yeah. We, that's an interesting thing about this, uh, this game. We never talked about that, but having 12 red hearts means that any damage you take will ruin your deal with the devil chance. Yeah. So that, that is a real big bummer. Uh, you know, to have as such. So the, uh, you do not want to have that many health upgrades, but also just like, sometimes I'm generating a fair amount of spirit hearts, but if I also am generating a bunch of eternal hearts, just, I have to leave all the spirit hearts on the floor. Mm -hmm. Uh, I know these are very for Isaac first world problems, but yeah, you know, this, this trinket is good. Let's I'll say that this trinket is good. Uh, getting eternal hearts is generally good. It's just, if you're so good at the game, like me and they're just raining down on you it can become burdensome well it's burdensome to be as good as you at lots of things that's that's true gary uh you know i try to bowl against people and it's just they end up they they gosh darn end up shoving their own heads in the ball polisher and dying yeah the the shino ballo uh and then just polish skull eventually it just rips off their scalp, and then they just come back with a gleaming skull before, like, dropping to their knees and, and collapsing in front of you. Well, uh, and then a paltry even, score of 270. And even then, their head rolls, you know, off their shoulders into the, the lane. Right. <laughs> into the gutter. Gutter ball. Gutter <laughs> so, ball a, every a, time. Finer, final indignity. Yeah, because the, uh, the skull is just not set up to get to the end of the lane. It's going to veer. Yeah. Unless you put a ton of spin on that with, like, when you're collapsing, you get, like, just the perfect amount of English on that. But most people are too busy thinking about the fact that they're going to hell. Well, also, and we didn't really talk about this, but the way that you, whenever you bowl, you do bumper bowl. Well, yeah, Gary, of course I do. I'm a professional. So the the head try, you know, goes in the gutter just because it's, you know, it's sharpened from going through the shino ball, though. But at the same time, like, you know, every once in a while, there's the, the, the reason it's a problem that these losers... Uh, had their head not get any pins is because they could have. They absolutely could have. It was their game to lose at that point. Plus, yep. oftentimes their jagged teeth are open and they pop the bumper and then I have to wait for them to get a new bumper. Yeah. And then then, then some guy, some GED guy, has to come and do this for Will Hughes, That's, the I, brain I'm not, surgeon. I'm not comfortable with that. <laughs> I was just trying to think how yeah. else to make you uncomfortable. Yeah. <laughs> I, I figure that might, you know, this is too effective. It's super effective. Yeah, some of the smartest people I, I know have GEDs. I, GEDs are great. Like, I, I'm the last person who, I didn't get my degree until like two <laughs> years ago. I'm the, the last, and I have an undergraduate degree that doesn't matter. Like, I'm the last person to be, uh, I was just knew that you'd feel self-conscious about it. Because I wanted to bring <laughs> up your, your brain surgery. Uh, your brain your brain surgery degree that you didn't finish. I w- it was never brain surgery. It was microbiology. Brain physics. Brain, well, there was some brain physics, yes. Yeah. Like, this one bounces, this one doesn't. Yeah, the yeah. great failure of my life. Thank you for endeavoring to bring it up. Yeah, I, I was trying to say how you're real good at something, and I couldn't not insult you. So, yeah. it's probably worth interrogating. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Gary, did you read a lot of Bible tracts when you were a kid? A lot of, a lot yeah. of Jack Chick? Uh, not as a kid, I did as like an edgy teen. Mm-hmm. You know, I just thought they were really funny. And like, Dan Klaus has a really famous like one making fun of them. Uh, parody of them that's very funny. Mm-hmm. Uh, I like a lot. So I didn't read any of them uh, legitimately. At this point, all I can think about is the, uh, it's not exactly a Bible tract, but the Zootopia abortion comic. Hmm. Yeah. I don't know that. Oh, know Zootopia. Jesus, Gary. Uh, I don't know if oh, it's... Oh, no, been... no, wait, wait, I do, I do, I do. Okay. Okay, yeah, the, the, the you... really, really well-drawn... Yes. Zootopia... Pro-life screed. Yeah. I, I do know that. When you said... Um, for some reason, the fact that I hadn't seen seen Zootopia uh-huh. recontextualized that in my head to where it would have been reasonable for the characters to have come across an abortion comic. <laughs> and it like, I'm a cop. I work at the DMV. Here's an abortion comic. The end. You know, I don't, I don't know what that movie's about. Oh, now I'm um, sad that they didn't get the sloths who were – because, Gary, the, Zootopia is actually very good. I actually enjoyed it a great deal. But you know, they get it. They got sloths working at the DMV. They're not fast. And they, they was not served by that trailer. If, if, no, that if trailer was try awful. Teach me that it was a good movie. That trailer was not the way to do it. You know what else won't teach you it's a good movie? What's that? This popular internet abortion comic. 
<laughs> the, um, no, but it will teach you a couple things about uh, the reproductive uh, cycles of rabbits. I don't think it actually does. I don't think it's super biologically uh, accurate, accurate, especially for have, uh, an inter- intersexual relationship between a fox and a rabbit. They they have litters. That's like the, that, that's a, that's a that's a intense abortion. You know. <laughs> Uh, uh, <laughs> the, uh, Gary, don't ever say that. I'm. I'm using one of my three vetoes. You're never allowed to use the phrase "intense abortion" on our show again. Okay. I just Unless broke I the crystal the... orb and let out my hate. <laughs> Unless I want to get those other two vetoes off the table. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I guess I can't. That's not how vetoes work. It's not. Yeah. So. Uh, th- I'll treat that as like one of those magic cards that like lets you take a card out of someone's deck and put it, remove it from the game. Ooh, or lets you tear yeah. it up and then you tear up the card and then drop it and sprinkle it. Yeah, that's great. Chaos orb. Chaos orb. Um, so Gary, we actually brought say- it back to Isaac. I, I hey, Segway King against all odds. <laughs> yeah. Um. So it is fine trinket. If uh, if you like the show, uh, head on over to patreoncom slash TV. Hit us up. With some cash. Or some feedback. You know, you could just add us. We've never actually just said, add us with your feedback. Gary, do yeah, you like this I, idea? I, I, I can think of a reason why we haven't said that. Yeah. The um, I can think of a few. Yeah, I'm at um, Cole Ross. There we go. And I am at J.G. Greer. And, uh, yeah, let us know reviews. You, yeah, let us know your five-star reviews of our show. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I'll explain this and it will be several weeks down the road <laughs> and I'll be like, I don't remember why I'm going to see both those guys in person here fairly soon. So they, I can be drunk possibly at the time Yeah. when they ask me what that's about. And I'll be like, I don't know. And they're like, man, you gotta stop fucking doing this. Or, you know, <laughs> you know, it's like, whatever. They're going to do their human. Malbolgia. <laughs> <laughs> Malbolgia to you, Gary. Malbolgia uh, to you. Sweet Malbolgia to you. Good night. Good night.